Have you watched shows like Leverage, Librarians, Law and Order Criminal Intent, Ben 10? Then you've probably heard his words. We talked to Jeffrey Thorne here on Black Hollywood Lives, breaking into you next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Lives, breaking into. That's right. right I'm confident. I love being confident. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's my cut right now. Okay. Hello, folks. It's another edition of Breaking Into here on Black Hollywood Live. I'm your host, James Law Jr., and I'm so glad you can join me today. You can follow me at James Law Jr. on every possible online platform there is. <laughs> That's right. I'm everywhere. My guest is everywhere, too. My guest, I'm so happy to have him in here because I like when my guests have diverse talents and in diverse genres, and this guy is it. He's a prime example of a working writer with diverse credits. He was an actor, most notably on late 80s or late 90s TV show In the Heat of the Night. Let's talk about that a little bit. Then he successfully transitioned into a screenwriter, novelist, and author. He has done shows like the ones I, I mentioned at the top of the show, like Ben 10, Leverage, Law and & Order, Criminal Intent, Librarians, and others. He's also done comics, including a reboot of Knight Rider. And he's done anthologies and written works. Star Trek Voyager, Distant Shores is just one example. I mean, I mean, seriously, he has all kinds of stuff going on. It is an honor for me. It is. Don't be shaking your head. It is. All right, all right. Mr. Jeffrey Thorne. Thank you very much, James. You're <laughs> How crazy. Are you? See? I, shut up. <laughs> Get those people out of here. <laughs> I hate those people. They follow me everywhere. They follow you everywhere. Your social media too. They follow you everywhere. How uh, are you, sir? I'm I'm happy to finally be here. Yes. Yeah. I had some uh, issues getting here coming through Hollywood. It's L.A. folks. It's congested and it was filled with EMTs. I hope everyone's all right. Whatever that was. Uh, but yes, I'm, yes. I'm happy Thank to finally you. make your acquaintance, sir. Yes, we know each other through my brother. J Shout out to Jr. 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 He's the, he's the man. I'm still writing that story, man. I will someday finish the damn thing. <laughs> the man. And the myth, the legend, JR. That's right, my brother. So that's how we connected. He spoke very highly of you. And I think I do actually remember you on the show back in the day. Oh my God. Because oh my I was, God. I saw you, when I first saw your pictures back then, like you, you posted a picture from like back then. Oh, yes. And I was like, that looks, he looks familiar from that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, back then. boy. Yeah, what we all. Mm. Um, and uh, but so you did, you were an actor for a while. Yeah, for real. I was a real actor. Um, I started very early. Uh, be, got luckily got some success relatively early as well. I uh, was on that show and several others as guest stars and recurring and yeah. all the stuff. And uh, one day in the middle of a day, I just kind of was like, "This is not for me." Mm. And and hilarity ensued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yes. You, you described it as a successful transition, but yeah, the, you know. that glosses over <laughs> like <laughs> sure, six like many years, years of blood coming out of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> not being able to make a rent, and it was really rough, yeah. man. It was the dumbest mistake you could make at that stage of life. Ooh, I like that. Um, I made a lot of really bonehead choices, and I paid for them. But now here's the thing. So you did realize at that young age that this acting thing mm -hmm. wasn't feeding you somehow um, inside. Yeah. Because that you, that you, most people, they may take a break, go back to, you know, they get disillusioned. It's a, it's a hard business. It is rough. It is rough. And part of it is how you're wired. There's a... It wasn't the actual acting. Um, I actually still get a kick out of acting. Okay. If you scour your internet, you uh -oh. may find some voice stuff that I've done recently, or I can tell you after. So yes. You can find. But um, the the larger social set of being an actor um, requires that you are, when you leave your house, you're on. Mm -hmm. If you're smart and you live in L.A. and you walk out of that house, you should assume as an actor, you don't know who you're running into, you don't so know true. who you're talking to, or whose yeah. child you're talking to, or husband or wife you're talking to, or boyfriend. That's true. Or any of that. Yeah. And just as things can go very well for you on a chance meeting, yes. things can also go really poorly for you on a chance meeting. So the idea that you're kind of always on, except when you're in your house, mm -hmm. didn't sit well with me. I could Ooh. not, I could not, many actors can do it, mm -hmm. and they do it effortlessly, and it doesn't hurt their souls in any way. Mm -hmm. They're fine. But for me, it was taking a toll. And I realized, uh, I wouldn't even been able to put words on it back then, but at the time I was like, I gotta stop this or some bad things are gonna happen to my psyche. Yeah. And then I didn't work for a long time in any capacity. I had no marketable skills. <laughs> uh, my degree was worthless. Oh, I gotta... <laughs> uh, my Bachelor of Fine Arts was worthless. <laughs> Um, so education didn't help any. Not at all. My like fallback that. career was illustrator. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, but in a weird way, it came about because people knew I could draw. 
Okay. It wasn't like my game plan. Okay. Stop me, because I'll go. No, I don't want to interject. Don't worry. Okay. 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 Um, it wasn't my game plan, but I was running out of funds at one point. And a lady I know who runs a, um, uh, Sharon Leibowitz, who runs uh, the Golden Apple with her family. Uh, I came in one day, and she said, hey, you know how to draw, right? And I was like, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what, are, we what are you accusing yeah. me of? Like, you know? And a white pointing at me. What's going <laughs> on? Why are people looking at me right yeah, now? Yeah, 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 Do you yeah. have food and money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, basically she said, there's a guy looking for an artist. Would you be interested in that gig? And I was like, how much is he paying? You know, is they pay it? Yeah, okay. And he said, 500 bucks. And I said, to do what? So I need a couple of pieces of poster art. And I was like, you want me to draw two pinup posters wow. for $500? I'm your boy. Right, I'm here. <laughs> okay. In. So I didn't even know that was a job, man. Yeah, right. So oh, my God. that turned into three or four years of that. Um, wow. Yeah, it sounds great. At the, it didn't live as well as it well, sounds. I'm sure, but still, yeah. something is something. That's great. Yeah, it was all right. And I yeah. did that for a while. I did a lot of the kind of um, crappy jobs that real illustrators in this town would never even look at yeah. I read a lot of god awful scripts <laughs> and then tried to turn them into pretty artwork oh how funny oh, <laughs> it was so bad man there's some bad stuff out there there's, I've seen some too you, oh my god things yeah. that you wish had been written in crayon yeah. that's how bad they were <laughs> right at least there'd be pretty colors here I like that right? <laughs> couldn't you have gotten some magic markers or something no yeah some bad so stuff so that went on for a while and then I sort of segued into Largely from the prodding of my wife and a couple of my friends. She was my girlfriend at the time. But um, they were like, you're still writing. You're just writing in obscurity, essentially. Uh, a friend of mine who is a comic book writer uh, called uh, Jerry Duggan. Okay. Um, he partly responsible for the current Deadpool phenomenon. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Um, uh, he hooked, this is all pre-internet folks. Okay, folks. So yeah. when I say word of mouth, I mean literally like the words word out of, of someone's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Yes. Uh, he called me yeah. up one day and he had got wind of a of uh, Disney was looking for people who could write and draw to pitch them cartoon ideas. Okay. And he was like, okay. I thought of you, Jeff. Wow. And I was like, he said, call this guy, uh, this guy named Steve Aaron Garen, lovely man. I think he moved to China subsequently. <laughs> Not my fault. Uh, <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. I think it's yeah. I got to get yeah. out of here. His wife went to China. <laughs> I, I don't blame myself. <laughs> um, but I came in and I pitched Steve some stuff. I drew some pictures and I ended up being in Disney development wow. for a uh, TV series that didn't go. Which happens. Every single time yeah. with well, Jeff so yeah. far. <laughs> But that's now eight that I have almost wow. Gotten there. But in a way, that's kind of it how, it's how it happens. Yeah, that's I how mean, it really works. People that's don't know out there. That's, that's kind of how it works. It's mostly no, no yeah. matter what level you're yes. at. People mostly say no. But I got my first taste of what it was like. Um, I, I was in Disney development for a year on that project. I made a lot of connections. I just had no management, no nothing. Wow, it was all from that one like call this guy. See, there you go. Um, it does and work. Then the bottom fell out again. Okay. Uh, trying to think how that went. Uh, I'm trying to gloss over stuff that won't embarrass people. <laughs> um, embarrass them, embarrass them. No. It's just between us. There's yeah. nobody and, here. And everyone listening. <laughs> I told you people to get out of here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was a bumpy ride for a while. Um, I couldn't get arrested as a screenwriter for a long time. Which you know, that's After hard that, too. It's oh. very difficult. I, yeah. Again, I had to be. I had to pretend to be a fake person who was my management. That's I like a, that. That's a story I'm not telling on the air. Okay. I'll tell you off the air. But okay. it involved costumes, fake phones, fake websites, and wow. quasi legal access to certain documents that only real agents can get. Oh, I love it. Um, okay, that, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but and it did get me meetings, and ultimately I ended up at a meeting. Um, with um, oh uh, James Halpern, okay. he was uh, David Icke's uh, uh, assistant at uh, Battlestar Galactica, which was like the big thing at the yes, time. Yes, of right? course. Yeah, brought me in, and they were like, "We like your stuff. Um, you're not going to write for our show." Oh, yeah. and I was like, "Well, why did you make me drive my ass all the way out like, here?" Okay, to, hello, to whatever. Because we liked your work. Yeah, okay. Right? And we want to talk to you. And they said, "Don't feel bad. We, you know, David knows basically everyone in Hollywood." There are a lot of writers okay. that are much more longer in the tooth than you who couldn't hit the Battlestar target. It's just okay. a very narrow, okay. narrow target. And I believed him. Okay. And it was supposed to be one of those, you call them a general, where they just kind of meet and sniff you and see if you're any good and mm -hmm. like that. And it ended up, it was supposed to be 30 minutes roughly, and ended up being almost three hours. Wow, uh, and we just talked about a lot of stuff, and they're like, oh, that sounds great, send us that, we want to look at that, and blah, 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 blah. Now, again, that didn't turn into any work for that company, mm -hmm. ever, still to mm -hmm. this day. Mm -hmm. But when I got home, he had left a message on my 
and this is something you may not remember, young people, my answering machine. Ooh, an answering machine. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> said, Crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, this whole thing with that manager that you're working with, who was, in fact, me, um, <laughs> doing a funny voice on the phone. Yes. Uh, said you can't do that. You need a real. You need real, like serious management. This guy's. Okay. I don't know who he is. <laughs> he's very. He's very gung ho for you. He's clearly like, in your me. corner. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it is me. It's me. But, that's, pretty, that's pretty funny, actually. Yeah, it, it was kind of cool, and on a weird educational way, people mm. would talk to me about my client, Jeff, in a way that producers and executives talk to the agent really okay, about their it. client. Okay. And then usually the agent, if it's really harsh, will filter. Right? Yes, that's right. I was I did not have that luxury. Wow. So I had to bite my tongue many a time when I was when I turned in a script that was considered unsatisfactory or you know his demeanor when he came in was a little bit whatever. It's not like I knew how to do this. It was all But how did you like not I mean you can't. You, you can't, can't cuz you're going to blow everything. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to blow okay. everything. Yeah. So uh you know our natural instincts to go, but, but no, I, I no, there was oh, no I, defending I, your client. There's yeah. none of that. Right. There's like, well, yeah. there's none of that. Yeah. And it, 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 it helped me because it was like having a really harsh teacher. Okay. Right? I like that. I like that. And like some of the stuff, I'm like, screw that guy. Right, right. Right. But some of it, I was like, okay, I didn't think of that. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. um, and he says, call my old agent. I was with him when I was a writer. I'm now on the producing side. Okay. Uh, but he was great. He's small. But if you if you guys hit it off, he will be a good agent for you. And he was my agent for a decade after that. Wow. I met him and he was great. And Michael Lewis, he's lovely. And I uh, just recently left him under protest. Uh, oh, really? Well, that's a whole other show. Okay. <laughs> um, but Michael's great. I, okay. had no, I had no problems with him. I yeah. did not leave him because he did a poor job. Okay. okay. Um, um, and so during that time, um, I had met who, a guy who's now my best friend who I make comics with, uh, Todd Harris, and he's the real deal when it comes to art. Okay. Uh, you can look him up on the. He doesn't have a true web presence. Oh, but I think you can find him on Instagram. Okay, he's Todd Harris on Instagram. Instagram. He Brocasso. Okay, Bro Bro I like that Brocasso. I like Bro that Brocasso on Instagram. I'm looking later. I'm looking later. Any um, any of the big big uh, feature action films like mm. the Wolverine and things okay. like that. He's a storyboard pre concept artist on. Okay, he's doing some stuff now that no one's supposed to know about, but will be huge in a couple of years. Okay, he okay. did John Wick is something. Oh yeah, John Wick. Okay, yeah. Right, so. We met up on a project, and we just became really good friends. And he said, let's make some comics together. We started this little company, Genre 19, where we put out okay. stuff. And he had a friend who we had done a little gig for who said, um, who called me up one day and said, look, I know you don't know me well, but uh, I have an in. I'd like to pair up with you um, and take something into the Dick Wolf Company, and maybe we can sell it as a, as a, uh, a pilot. We know Dick Wolf, right? of course, the whole Law & Order <laughs> franchise alone. Well, this is how, right, right? And right. I'm like, Dick Wolf? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, you know who that is. You know Dick Wolf? Why are you talking to me? <laughs> Just walk in. And, and what she said, and I thought it was actually very reasonable, was I generally write romantic comedy. Okay. Todd, our mutual friend, says, you write crime stories. And I said, yes, in fact, I do write crime stories. Um, tell me your idea. Don't tell anyone else if it's gold. Because that would be foolish, and I'm I'm trustworthy, but most of us are not. No, that's true. Okay, she told me, and I was like, Oh Christ! <laughs> I so wish I wasn't a trustworthy person. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that yeah. was gold, baby. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I said, It's so good. Why do you need me? And she said, The learning curve's too steep. The window on being able to walk this in um, will be closing soon. Okay. And after that, it would be easily a, long, a year minimum before you could do it again. Wow. And I'd like to strike while the iron's hot. And I said, okay, fine, let's pair up. I don't have a learning curve on writing crime stories. You have a great idea. Let's pair up. So we did. We took the thing in. They said, we're not making this show. Are you too stupid? <laughs> no. But would you like to be staff writers? And there you go. I said yes. And she said, well. And I was like, are you insane? Really? She's like, oh. Well, it was a pay cut for her. For uh, me, it was a pay upgrade. Uh, yeah. Pro tip. When you are partners in screenwriting, you're paid as if you're a single writer. Oh, interesting. Okay. I know that. Okay. At least in television. They do, not, they do not pay you each a writer's salary. They pay you one writer's salary to split. Oh, so I didn't know that. From okay. where my life condition was, that was still a massive salary yeah, upgrade. Yeah, yeah. But from her, it was actually a downgrade. Okay. And okay. she had a kid to deal with. She was a single uh, mom. Okay. She had a lot of real things on her plate that had... It was a real consideration. Okay. Finally, other people than myself are like, are you crazy? Take yeah. the top. Yeah. So we were partners on that for... 
20 weeks. We mm-hmm. were not asked back after those 20 weeks. Ooh, dang. We were not the best partnership. We're okay. still friends. Okay. But not every writer can work with every other writer. Makes sense. Makes sense. And uh, at the end of it, we were like, let's shake hands and walk away. Okay. Anytime she, I'll pick up the phone when she calls. Okay. okay. It's, it was nothing, right. nothing negative about that. Right. Um, and <sighs> so many crap going on. I had, in that same time, tried to get on the show Leverage. I try to sell them. In so I used to watch that show. Actually, I, oh, I love Leverage. So much. It was great. It was a great show. I actually. loved Leverage as a fan. I loved Leverage. Yeah, so that was much. a good show. Um, but I tried to get on their season one, and I couldn't because they didn't have the credits. Like mm. the two showrunners really liked me, but the powers that be that were around them were like, uh, "Who is this guy? Yeah, He's written right. some comics and some short right. stories, and you know, it's a good script, but who the hell is this guy?" Mm-hmm. Uh, so they couldn't justify it. So they bought a story from me with option to make a uh, for me to write the screenplay, and then they okay. never did it. Um, and that was three seasons previous. So now I'm out of a job, basically. Mm -hmm. So my agent at the time was like, call up up the leverage guys and see if they'll take you on. Sounds great, right? Except three, uh, two weeks, three weeks previous, John Rogers, the showrunner of that show, had taken me out to lunch specifically to tell me why I would not be on his show that season. (laughs) And how lucky it was that I was already on another show because he's not a poacher and he wasn't gonna take me off somebody else's show, but also you're employed, so no harm, no foul. And I was like, so I told my agent, he's like, well, then you have zero to lose, let him know. That's true, I guess, yeah. Right, and I was like, okay, Okay. you know, so I did. And John is one of those people who gives you the cryptic email response. (laughs) He's lovely in person, but his email manners are terrible. I just love it. So he will be like, yes, message received. That's it. (laughs) And I'm like, really? That's That's all I get. That's That's all all I get. I I just told you I'm fired from my first big gig. And that's whatever. So long story short, um, over a couple of weeks where he didn't say anything back, I get another email from him, call your agent. That's it. Okay. Which could have meant anything. Yeah, it could have been, right. we have a writer's assistant slot open. Oh, okay. uh, or, it. would you like to go to lunch with you, me, and your agent? <laughs> it literally, with John, could have meant anything. right? <laughs> I called your agent to tell him to fire you. Right, you yeah, right, exactly. It's, right. It's anything. So I call up Michael, and Michael's like, yeah, you're in. Um, they would like you to bring you on staff. Apparently there was a shakeup in the staff. Oh. Money freed up. You would have to come in as a staff writer again. Okay. And I was like, you sound like you're trying to negotiate something. Yeah. And he's like, well, I am an agent. I'm like, do not negotiate anything. I am currently out of work, and it's Christmas. <laughs> I have to sell this to my wife. Right. Okay. If I go home and tell her I'm fired off of one of the biggest shows in television, yeah, right. and don't follow it up with, I just got hired on one of a hit show, <laughs> I'm in trouble. I'll be on the news. Okay. <laughs> just tell them yes. 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 Just call yes. them back and say yes. yes to whatever they say. Yes. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, just call them. I'm sure. And say yes. I'm sure. Right. So he does. And then I was on that show for three seasons. Now here's the thing. So you know, this business that worry that we are in mm-hmm. called entertainment. <laughs> <clears throat> is not stable. <laughs> not even close. Let me see if I can say that even clearer. It's yeah. not stable. It is chaotic. Yes. And so it can be beautiful chaos. It can mm-hmm. be horrible chaos. I mean, it, can, it can be anything. So do this whole, you just gave me a nice, good kind of point of, of, of your life okay. of doing this. How did you kind of stay in, to stay in it? Why didn't you just become a bricklayer? Or like, why didn't you just go and say, screw it, I'm going to work at... You know, back then, blockbuster. Okay. Like, why didn't you just say? Why didn't you? Well, do that? the Disney movie version is: I just had hope, and I had my little my little <laughs> animal friends telling me, um, "Don't worry, honey, you're going to be great." Um, but in fact, I had those too. It sucked. Yeah. It yeah. sucked yeah. for between being an actor and being officially a writer. Yeah. It sucked. Yeah. Even when I had little momentary successes, where I'd sell a short story, or I'd get close to winning a contest or something like that, it was all good for the ego to say, "Okay, you're really a writer," mm-hmm. but it didn't do anything for your wallet. And mm-hmm. like you maybe pay month for a month's rent, and right. then you're still back in the same right. thing you were exactly. doing. I mean, I always tell this story of this is a good example of um, I, everyone who knows me has heard this story a million times. It's your turn. Okay. Um, we were so broke that at one point I found on Craigslist, I think uh, there was a porn company uh, in, in Van Nuys somewhere. Really in Van Nuys? I know porn company. I just blown the I blown the lid off. I know. Porn I'm like, in the valley. Really in the valley? It's <laughs> crazy. At that time, I did not know. Um, Did you but, not really, really not now? Okay, I'm not, I'm not really a porn guy. Okay, but uh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, they wanted someone who could draw, they could recreate Disney style art for their fairy tale themed pornos that they were. Oh, doing. How funny is that? Okay, the pay was like redonkulous. Well, okay, I'm sure because they wanted you to do like mm-hmm. a bunch of boxes. Plus, again, okay. this was a fledgling internet. I've been on the internet a longer time than most people yeah. back since the dot matrix. And oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been on the internet since I was 
since before I think they even had a name for what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was fairly savvy, but from their point of view, it looked like I was like ahead of the curve. Oh, wow. Right? Because I was doing, I was like, well, I'll just send you some JPEGs and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they're like, bro, and okay. like, oh, this guy's a pro. I didn't even know why he's talking to us. <laughs> right? Right? I had my little website up already. Oh, I, love I was it. all official. Okay. okay. Right? Now, this day, like a four year old has a website. Yeah, they but do. at that time, it was a deal. So yeah. I had to drive out to the valley again, this stupid valley. Uh, and I, I was know. like, and you had to do that calculation of do I have enough gas? Do I have enough money for this gas? Right. But the about their offering to pay is fairly large, mm -hmm. and I could work from home once I got it. Oh, okay. So okay. great, right? I drive out with my little samples. Yes. Because they were like, what we showed us on the web was not exactly right. Can you draw it like this and then bring that out? Okay. We want to see it in real physical. Okay. Right. No problem. Like, oh, whatever. So I get out there and I tell a story because it is like this. It was like the beginning of that horror movie where I arrived <laughs> and it was nearly sunset. I'm driving into an industrial park. Everything's brick walls with, <laughs> with steel doors in it. The few windows you can see have bars on them. Right. I was like, if fog and a werewolf sound comes, I'm out of here. Right. Uh, and I go up and I knock on the door. Right. And it's just literally a steel door. Oh my God. Shh. Who are you? What do you want? <laughs> I'm Jeff Thorne. I'm here for the art. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on in. <laughs> Phil's in the back or whatever the hell his name yeah. is. Right? And with my little portfolio. Oh, I love right? it. I love it. And I walk back there and I'm expecting, you know, I'm expecting like huge silicon breasted women yeah, lying yeah, course, all over course. the place. Yeah, right. Please don't. I don't want to look. I don't right, want to walk right. through your porn suit. Yes. It isn't like that at all. No, I'm it's sure all it like wasn't. It's film business. cans and yeah. whatever. Very industrial. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I'm sure they don't want random looky loos showing up to the. They, they, they don't, actually. Right? I'm not, they don't. So I go in there and I didn't get the job. Okay. And I'd come out of there really feeling bad. I'd blown all this gas money, and I'm like, I'm not even good enough as an artist to draw porn boxes right. for this knockoff Disney Price. porno thing that they're going to do. I got to go home and tell my wife that I failed to get this gig. Yeah. Still my girlfriend at the time, yeah. my wife. Because who would have married me <laughs> in that stage of my life? She loved oh you. Oh, my God. She loved you. <laughs> you can tell that she's for real, obviously. And I was just like, I have to do something to turn this around. So when you... When you say, you know, did you were you a brave little soldier and did this, the theme song of your life swell, yeah. that's not what it's like. Right. Any given day, right. I could have quit this and Easily. gone off to Easily. another life. And I can't exactly say, sometimes I would get angry, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be times when I would see friends of mine who had been friends of uh, mine when right. I was on when I was on the rise, yes. who were still in that track. Yeah. And some of them are movie stars now. Okay. Um, and so every once in a while I turn on the TV and oh, Damn! If the, if you ever feel like karma is not real, uh, don't be an actor because right. right. your success and their other successes start to influence one another, and your self image gets weird. Yes, it's true. All this stuff. The only thing that really saved me was writing because it was something I knew I was good at, regardless of what the world was telling me. I would get these weird. Um, I would say this: the best thing about getting in the way I got in is I got I got my bones. I broke in kind of in prose, selling short stories, okay. which meant I didn't ever have to worry about, am I too old, am I not female, am I female, right, am all right. I black, yeah. am I straight, yeah. am I gay? Right. These people were reading stories, does this story fit the needs of my magazine or publication in some way? Here's a check. Yeah. Right. So enough people who don't know you and are only judging you by your work say, you know, here's $1,000, here's $10,000, here's whatever it is. You start going, alright, it's not, it actually isn't me, this time it's you person who's not buying my stuff. Mm -hmm. I can get over that. So then it started to look like how long of um, how long of a wait do I have? How much do I have in me to wait? Yeah, yeah. Right? And I said, can I do this calculation? And because my acting career had never ever really been a bad acting career, okay. I felt like I hadn't really done the period of time in your life when you're struggling to be an actor because I kind of just fell into it okay. and never didn't work. Yeah. I never stopped working. So. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of not fair because most actors, oh, I know, you know, mm -hmm. unless their last name is Paltrow, don't um, don't fall into <laughs> right. stuff. No, like they that, don't. Right. right? So, uh, felt all right. I'm now paying my dues. Yeah. I'm a little bit older than I should be. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, well. But can I last this out? And there were some weeks where it didn't feel like you could, where you were like, I'm on unemployment and I'm scrounging for my unemployment check, or. That last client was literally insane, not just, wow, I had a crazy client, like, right. I'm glad I got out of there. Yeah. That kind yeah. of stuff. And then this thing happened. What I would tell young writers all the time is make sure everybody knows that you're a writer. Because so, many of, so much of my early work came from someone who respected me as a person mm -hmm. enough to read something I'd written. There you go. Okay. And then months, sometimes years later, go, hey, Jeff, or like with Jerry, who he and I are struggling at the same time. 
I don't know how much of my stuff he'd actually read. I hadn't read anything of his, but he was like, I like that guy. He seems smart. He know he's knowledgeable about this mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and I've seen his work, his artwork. Mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt me to burn this favor. Right. I can't use it. It's so true when you say that because in my other life, many people know I'm a professional organizer, certified life coach, and in conversations, just casual or serious, I was like, what do you do? I'm an organizer, and you go about your business, and hopefully they'll like me as a person because it has come back to me months later saying, you're that organizer, aren't you? Um, my girlfriend over here needs you, blah, blah, blah. Like, just, just that's later. how it works. It's exactly the same, and I think that's probably true of any business, at mm -hmm. least a at least a contractor type business. Yeah. It's largely initially word of mouth. I mean, now people can literally look at my work. Yes. Millions of people look yes. at my work. Yeah, yeah. But uh, at that time, those kind of friends are golden, right? Todd helped me out with work when uh, my best friend Todd is like, there were jobs that he would take that, that's what you need. You need a support system that is an emotional I was support ask you. system. Yes. Because like when I was really broke and Todd would take, Todd gets paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to draw pictures for the movies. He's that good, right? right. right? Occasionally, back then, when he was still, in the, I would say in the early part of his career, he'd get jobs that were very big, or he'd take two at once sometimes, mm. and there'd be like the scut work, the crap part of the oh, job. Yeah, yeah. He's like, Jeff, are you busted? Because I need some help, and uh, I'll split, <laughs> yeah. I'll, you know, I'll peel right. off a third of this check right, right. for you to do this crap part of the job. Yeah. I know you can do it. And it's good for him, too. He doesn't and worry about everybody it. Everybody wins. Everybody wins, right? yes. So, and, but I also found out he's a person of integrity. At one point, he loaned me a lot of money, which I paid back. Very good. Um, and we became friends because of my adversity and him not turning out to be a dick. Well, you know, my, my, I would have written on my wall, I say it, every, my, my show motto is pay it forward, share knowledge, lift each other up. That's right. Because, you know, we come from, as black folks, mm -hmm. we come from a village mentality. Yes, that's true. And it's one of those things where in America, it seemingly we've gotten away from that in many ways, which is sad. Yeah. And I feel like you have a village. I have a village. I mean, you have I feel to like build it. You have to build it. You have to build it. But the other thing, too, is I noticed, and this is from my acting days, a friend of mine who was actually a relatively successful actor at the time, and he's still working all the time now, he had just gotten off of a series, and he'd gone home to Chicago after having left to go to college, to go to college and do all that stuff. And he came back home, and some friend, and they had a little block party because it was like, you know, Return of the Conquering yeah. Hero. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was rare, you know. Yeah. And a black guy gets on a show like that that yeah. he was on. It wasn't a silly comedic show, it was like a drama, and he was young, and it was a yeah. thing, right? Nowadays, yeah. everybody's kind of go for that diversity thing. Yeah. But at that time, it was m fairly rare. Um, he said that the guy comes up to him and says, How'd you get on that show? Right? Which is a reasonable no, question. It is, it is. So he gives him the answer, which is, well, uh, you know, when I was in when I was here, I was in all those arts programs, and then I got out of here, and I got a little bit of a scholarship to go to New York, my school in New York, and I did that, and I did some commercials, and I got a little part in this movie, which you saw this little mo like literally one line, yeah. but I got an agent out of that, and I came up to L.A. and I and I auditioned around, and I got into the thing, and I did this thing, and I did this thing, and these people saw me, and I ended up on that show, right? And this the real story takes about a half hour, right? At the end of which the guy goes, "Yeah, but how'd you really do it?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because the idea was that there was some kind of fix that was in it. There was some kind of hookup that could be gotten that didn't really require hard work. And as I say, mm. unless your last name is Paltrow, that's not happening. For anybody. So, for anybody. I mean, it's there's some adversity that's, if you're gay, if you're female, if you're non-white, yeah. whatever, there are extra hurdles. But yeah. the baseline job is still freaking hard. Yes. If you didn't have those, it's still yes. ridiculously yes. hard. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, picture having to go for the make or break job interview three times a day. Right. Every day. And not getting the job right. three times a day. Right. Every day. Okay, uh, and competing against your best friends, right. competing against your sisters and your cousins and mm -hmm. your spouses sometimes, mm -hmm. and not getting it right. every day. Ugh. What kind of iron will does it take to go through that? It <sighs> take a lot, obviously. But people think when you do it well that it's somehow a lottery win or that it's right. easy, and therefore I can do it. And so they want the hookup and they get mad when you don't give them that secret handshake. And I'm like, there's no secret handshake that doesn't involve hard work. I tell you folks because I everything that I do I work hard and you, you follow you me and I, I do I work very hard and I'm here to kind of I I help other people here and there when I can too and people have helped me but no it's 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 well I always say you just got to do the work just continually do the work be and, really good it's amazing yes. how much luck you have when you're <laughs> right. really good right. at something right anything right no, right. right so 
Yeah, so I worked on Leverage for a, a long time. I had a lovely time. I learned a lot. The, for the most part, the experience was, uh, I would say, if it was a 100% experience, it was a 97 to 98. Ooh, that's good. Okay, that's good. Good percent okay. experience. Um, and then I was on my ass for a little while. I did okay. some cartoon work. Right. Um, but I wasn't, the timing of when, because it was a cable show, a basic cable show, Yeah. The timing of when we were available to look for work yeah. didn't really coincide with actual staffing right. season, so a lot of us were not. You yeah, know. and so I ended up sitting out at the end of Leverage. I ended up sitting out about a season and a half. Then I started taking animation work. I had done some, and this is a good one. Uh, Dwayne McDuffie, mm -hmm. um, comic book people know Dwayne McDuffie. Animation people know Dwayne McDuffie. He, we called him the Maestro. He was probably, he was certainly the smartest human being I've ever met. Wow. Like by far, like literally a genius. I asked him one time, "Is it like?" We're all just like slow motion, and you're like in a slow motion world with children around you all the time. He's like, yeah. You know? I was like, oh, man. Like, dang it. That sucks. I, know, I love it, though. I, I used to think I was smart until you showed up. You know, he was great. But yeah. I tried to get on, because um, I love comics, I tried to get on um, the Justice League show. And oh, I've yeah. known Dwayne via the web. We'd been sort of web. I wouldn't say friends. He was a, sort of a person I'd ask for advice okay. about certain things, um, and I, you know, I said, "Yeah," he said, "Yeah, hit me up. Send me, send me an outline or something." And so I did, but I never got on. I kept not getting on, and I was like, "Oh man, this oh, like, I'm just going to stop this. I can't, <laughs> this hurts my heart." Yes, right. And then years later, my best friend and I put out our comic book, um, Prodigal. Okay. And uh, Dwayne McDuffie used to wander around the San, uh, San Diego Comic Con. Uh, his, I hear this booming voice, Jeff, Jeff Thorne, right? And I turn around and it's Dwayne. You can't miss Dwayne. He was gigantic. Oh, okay. 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 He was like, I don't know, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, okay. I mean, a giant of a man. Yes. Uh, and I'm tall, by the way. Yeah, you are. So, you are. Like, my <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, right, yeah. clearly it's Dwayne. Yes. yes. He's like, so I really like the comic, right? And he knows some of my ups and downs and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right? He's like, I really like the comic. How would you like to try and write some Ben 10 episodes? Right? Now, my grandkids love that show. He's love that show. I love Ben 10. But here's the thing. Okay. I had given up on all of that because oh. of my lack of success writing for the Justice League. I was like, all right, I guess animation ain't for Jeff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if I don't have an in with this guy and I can't get across the table with that. Lesson for you now, yeah. apparently. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. I was like, I'm out. Yeah. Right? And I was cool with it because I was like, eh, okay. you know, how often is the Justice League even going to be on the air? Right? Young Justice, come back to me. <laughs> come back <laughs> to me, Young <laughs> Justice. <laughs> I loved you so much. Yes. Um, but he says, I love the comic. It's got a great sense of humor. Um, how would you like to write some Ben 10 episodes? And I was like, I'd love to. I didn't think that was an option anymore. Yeah, you were, you were done. And he's like, I want to see three proposals from you in two weeks. And I was like, <laughs> yes, sir, Willie Wonka. Sir, yes, whatever you say. Whatever you say. <laughs> you really walk out of really. <laughs> right? Sure, whatever you say. Okay. And so I ended up writing actually wow. some really fun Ben 10 stuff. Wow. And I stayed in that loop. And here's a good example of my animation work now comes entirely from that guy saying, bring wow. me some stuff because I met several people who were above me, okay. ahead of me in the animation world, okay. many of whom are now running their own shows. There you go. So they'll find out if I'm free, because live action and animation are sort of different worlds, yep. which is unfair and shouldn't be that way, <laughs> but they are currently. Okay. Um, and they'll say, are you busy on a show? If not, I'm doing an adventure show, and it seems like the kind of thing you're into, and we'd love to have you. That isn't because I'm so cool and sweet and nice of a person. I am cool and sweet and nice of a person, but right. they worked with me. Yeah. So they know I'm going to hand something off to Jeff. He's going to turn it in on time. It's going to be fun and good. That's what it is. You know, and so if you're good, I, it's weird to say that about yourself, yes. but invariably you will find that people really don't hire, they will hire their friends if there's a huge pad in the budget, yes. but if there's a close margin, they can't afford to nope, do it they that can't. way. They, can't. they have to hire people they know they can work with, which is not friends. And necessarily. work within their, the time frame they need. And inside the, yes. the specs of what the show is supposed to be, yes. Yes. you have to be kind of a mechanic in mm -hmm. a weird way. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, and so like le the, the, seasons between, the season between Leverage and The Librarian's Beginning I ran around, I got a show in development, I did all a bunch of stuff that the audience never sees. Mm -hmm. I almost got a show on the air at the CW. Wow. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, Female lead, magical villains. Oh, total CW. Uh, it's ready for CW. Come on, CW. You want to bring my show <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too Now late. you're on here. Come yeah. on. Something, it, something happened. It's burned. Yes. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but no, but like those that season and a half looks like you're dead out in the world, but in fact backstage you're, you're doing, doing all stuff. this crap. Yeah, doing but what I did was I turned down a bunch of animation work that year. So we started running out of money. 
Okay. Right. And my wife was like, how'd this happen? I thought this was like, yeah, I, like thought that was, I thought these days were never coming back. Right. Right. And I was like, they're not back. They're, they're not, not back, back fully. They're not back fully. They're not even close to back. Yes. We're just, there's this thing called residuals. Just yes, wait. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just relax. <laughs> but I realized that I had been a little bit lazy. You get a little bit successful and you yep. go, okay, this is my life now. You can't do that. You keep growing. Okay. So okay. this time when we got off of hiatus mm -hmm. on the in between the librarian seasons, I let everyone in animation know I'm not saying no to stuff right got now. Got it. And I started getting calls. See? And then it was a matter of how much work can you take on? That's a that's a that's a hard problem to have. It's rough. Right. It's, it's rough. rough. Embarrassment of riches. It yes. is an embarrassment of riches. But yes. you, you actually do end up having to say, does this fit the schedule and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I'd never been in a situation like that in my life where I had yeah. so much so many so many different things to work on that I actually had to figure out can I do them all yeah that's literally the first time in my life that's ever happened that's so great that was kind of cool but it isn't based on people shaking hands with me and going out to drink because yeah. I don't drink yeah and I rarely shake hands. No, um, but he just he just shake my hand before he came on. That's a lie. He's lying. I never shake. He did. I swear it. The handprint's in here. He did. Um, so yeah. So yeah. it's it almost invariably it comes back to can you do the work? Yeah. Are you a hard worker? Can you meet your deadlines? Are you a dick when you're in the writer's room? There are plenty of them. Somehow they keep working, but for the most part, people don't like to work with people yeah. that they find unpleasant. That's true. Uh, and why would you, you be, want to? And you could be the best writer on earth, the yeah, best actor on earth. I've had conversations where it's like, yeah, but is it worth it every day to have that person exactly. in front of you? Yeah, they're good, but are they that good? Mm. Nobody's that good, sorry. I, I haven't met the person. I can't think of a person who's good enough for some of the behavior I've seen. Me too. No, I'm I agree. Like, I, I just, I, I've had some hosts that worked with that. Right? Yeah. Um, they're not the best. And it's yeah. like, you just, uh, you just, it's not worth it. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we're going to have to have like a part two, three, four, Anytime five. You want. I, I mean, what am I doing? I'm just <laughs> sitting at home writing stories. Anytime you want, I'll drive out. So some quick things, just okay. quickly things. So yes, you've done some writing for like the Star Trek. You've yeah. done a reboot of Night. So I want to tell people, I'll, I'll make a statement right now. I'll make a statement right now. Black folks can write in any genre. Yep. I have folks who didn't know that. Well, yes. They know that. They're like, science fiction is up. Yes, you can write any genre. There are a lot of great... There's a documentary my friend Brandon did uh, called Brave New Souls where he addresses this problem. It's available on Amazon. Hey, folks. Um, and he interviews a lot of people that I know about because I read this stuff. Yeah. But the average audience member might not know that there's a black woman named N.K. Jemison who can write her ass off and mm -hmm. has a series of novels out. I just read the fifth season. It's okay. freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and that not only that, but it's a career choice that's available to you yeah. if you're good at it. Yeah. Like I was lucky. I had literary parents. My mom's a school mm -hmm. teacher. My okay. grandfather's a school teacher. Okay. Um, they were very pro reading, pro ex exercise. That's how I grew up. Brain, right. Pro right? We're, we're voracious readers. Readers. You're my brother, and I'm the same. Oh, way. clearly, he's yeah. he's a maniac. Yes, but um, <laughs> but like uh, I I found as I was growing up, and I don't know if it's still as bad as it was when I was growing up, but there was a certain amount of frowning upon too much of that in our subculture. Yes, on my own, yeah, right. Too. And uh, I mean, I didn't get all that like you're a geek, let's beat him up and no, that. Me I, either, I, either. I, I think that's a myth in in some respect. Yeah. But there was a lot of peer pressure to put that down and come play ball. You know, that's boring. Come play, come do something fun, basically. And I'm like, it is kind of fun, though. It's I fun. I know, exactly. You I know. like reading. I like writing. Yeah, I'm actually like, enjoying myself. Yes, right exactly. Now. But go outside. You got to yeah, go back yeah. then when we were kids. Go outside. Well, my dad would kick me out of the house. But oh, yeah. here's what he would do. He would say, on a, you can't do this now, I don't think, because no, people anymore. are paranoid about yes. like, child molesters or something. Yeah. But I live in D.C. I grew up in a city. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my dad would come in on a Saturday morning way too early. <laughs> it's Saturday. Why are you even in here? Oh, wow. Right? All right, get dressed, breakfast, get out. I don't want to see you until 6. Oh, I remember, I remember that. No, I remember those right. days. 6, 6.30. Right. They and call you back in, you know, for dinner. If you're in the neighborhood. Yeah, right. This is right. a city with a subway system and buses right. that work. That's right. I mean, he did not care. And there were no cell phones, kids. There no, were no, no micro it. trackers. And <laughs> he's like, get out of this house. I don't want to see you till 6. Yes. Be here at 6, though. Oh, no, yeah. You get in trouble. No, you get in trouble. Be here at 6. Oh, yeah. Right. Not 601, not DC 602. DC had museums yeah. and libraries and amazing parks and all kinds I of crap. I love DC. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you kick me out of the house, I'm going to find something to do and it's going to be cool. Funny. Okay. Yeah, you could. Right. Well, you're right. And sometimes it was playing games with the other boys around yeah. town. Sometimes it was I'm going to go to the Biograph and watch uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Catherine Hepburn movie by myself. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm going to go up to here and see these sculptures that are at the Hirshhorn Museum that look really yeah. weird. I don't even know why anyone would build that. You know, as a child. Right. <laughs> right. As a child. Yeah. Right. I spent inordinate amount of time in the Space Museum. Yeah. Yeah. For fun. For fun. Yeah. Right? So I'm not some brainiac. Right. I just happen to enjoy certain things. Yeah. And I happen to have a family group that were like, yeah, do that. Yeah. 
but the larger subculture would mm-hmm. try to funnel you into sports or something more reasonable, something safe. Yes. Right? Something safer yes. that they can depend on. And I'm like, there's no reason you can't do both. Right? I agree with that. Uh, and also, it's good for your... It's good for your spirit to embrace the arts. It's good I for agree. your growth as a human being to embrace the arts. In the same way that someone might have said to me at certain stages, maybe go play some hockey. Mm-hmm. Right? There's nothing wrong with team sports. You no, shouldn't have, you shouldn't equal cuz I know many people in the arts are sort of frown on and I'm like, look, if you haven't played a real solid game of touch football in the right. street yeah. or tackle football in the yes. street like we did it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Right? Crazy boys. Oh, my, right? yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, or yeah, stickball or any of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. You're missing something. I agree. So, do that too. Try to be as rounded as you can and for if for no other reason you don't know what you're going to end up being. So, but I just want to touch the point of the arts to me are just as important as politics and oh, and law and I mean every and health I mean because it, 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 it can affect all of those things. Well, when dictators take over countries, they generally kill the artists first or second. Isn't that funny? That's, uh, that's not ironic. It's not I'm, ironic. I'm, I'm not making that up. That's right? No, fact. I know it's not ironic. It's either. because that's where all the real juice comes from. That's where the heart talks. The heart talks from that mm-hmm. space. I agree. So get rid of those people or get them on our side quickly. I agree. Um, but more for our subculture, it's I've noticed there's a lot of great technicians. There's a lot of great directors coming up and they're doing some interesting things in the feature world and all that kind of stuff. But I want to see some black fantasy. I want to see, and I don't mean like I want to see some black fantasy. I don't. I want to <laughs> see what the you know. I want to see what those minds and that life experience will create. That is. Not Star Trek, not Star Wars, mm-hmm. but like Star Wars. And I don't mean it in a sort of militant, dig me, mm-hmm. I'm better than you right, kind of right. way. But like, yeah, me too. I get to play too. Yes. You know, I mean, I uh, and I'm seeing more and more of it. It's um, starting to happen. It's starting to happen. Uh, uh, there's a lot of folks doing some really great work in the comics world that needs more attention. Concrete Park is one of those things. Okay. Uh, um, uh, there are. Uh, and what's it? Enrique Carrion does um, Vessel. Okay. Uh, he's a, a, a Afro-Spanish. Oh, I love that. Okay. Writer. Yes. He's freaking awesome. Okay. Obviously, my friend Brandon Easton. Uh, Line Forge Comics is a black-owned business. I've heard that before. But their yes. work is not is not even exclusively black. It's mm-hmm. just that's a good example. Uh, I had a hard time breaking in the comics industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I broke in. I wouldn't say I broke in, but I got my big boost doing um, for, for for other people, not my own work. At Lion Forge, the only difference between Lion Forge and any other company is that they don't have any stigma when a black face shows up. Got it. They still need you to be able to write. Oh, that's They're true. still no. trying to pay bills. They right. don't have an exclusively, or even I don't even think it's predominantly black staff. Right. Mm-hmm. My editor was white. Oh, okay. My artist was white. Oh, okay. But they allowed me to add a black female character mm-hmm. to the Knight Rider mythology, which seems to have caught on with the audience who likes the stuff. Some of the diehards are like, this is not really no, Knight Rider. Yeah, and I'm like, don't buy the book. Right, exactly. <laughs> you have a choice in America. You have a choice. You have a choice. You're, I'm happy you flew my airline, but if you don't, there's <laughs> Delta right over there. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's the, that's the weird sort of indif undefinable thing yeah. when it comes to being in a, one of the many out groups. Yeah. It's not that you don't, it's not that someone's actively out to get you, it's that sometimes there's that like, well, that if I'm running a business and a, a, a gay female writer comes in, I don't give a shit whether she's right. gay or yeah, female. Right. I'm like, can she write? Is she right? And is she an asshole in the room? Right. Those are the only things I care I about. That one. Yeah. Okay. Well, who you're sleeping with is none of my business, no. straight or not. Yeah. So, please, don't add that extra weight because it's already hard enough. That's yeah. my whole thing. So I was very gratified that Lion Forge gave me the shot to reboot something that was. They spent money getting that license. Okay. They have stuff on the line, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. iconic. They had a fan base that was either going to accept or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say four fifths of that fan base was open to what I did. Okay. And there's okay. a very vocal one fifth. It's like, yeah. this is not season eight of Night Rider. Yeah. And I'm like, I told you it wouldn't be season eight of Night Rider. I never promised to do that. Right, right. Like, well you should have, but I did. Yes, sure. You know, yeah. so and you can't please everybody. No. Like yeah. my my version of Star Trek is going to be slightly different than mm-hmm. my favorite Star Trek writers. Right. You know, right. Right. whatever. But I don't know that I would have gotten that same sort of this guy's just good. Let, let's hire him because I by the way my pitches that didn't get seen yeah. were so insane from there they're like Jeff we're not doing that <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah. one's doing that version of Night Rider <laughs> why would you even pitch that version of Night Rider I tried I was like well I read the story. La, 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 la. No, no, nobody's no. doing that, 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 that okay that. but they didn't go this man is insane no they, they said this is a writer pitching us stuff no 
Yeah. We would like it to be more like this, just like any business would. Yeah, that's true. All right, blah, 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 blah. And I was yeah. like, all right, fine. What about this? Just say what you want. Oh, cool. Yeah. I had the same working relationship that I have now mm. with other companies. Oh, good. But I had to stack up so many chips. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Where they would go, okay, let's give them a little tumble. Yeah. And I'm like, but do you understand the chips over here were really hard to get? Technically, Don't these care. chips are harder to get than the chip you're throwing me. Don't care. They're like, but that's your voucher. Yep. You know? And I'm like, okay. It sucks, yeah. and it's a hard thing to tell younger writers, right? It's like, I used to have this thing over my desk. It's, a, um, it's from a Robert Heinlein, Stranger in a Strange Land, I think. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but one of the characters says, certainly the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't bet, you can't win. I kind of like that. Right? And the right. Other, right? The yeah, rules I like are, that. The deck's stacked against you. Yeah, but you the know. The rules are bad. Yeah. Okay, win anyway. Yeah. I like right? that. I like win that. anyway. I like that. Win anyway. Captain Kirk, there's no such thing as a Kobayashi Maru. Win anyway. <laughs> Win anyway. Superman won. Yep. When he gets his butt kicked, what does he do? Goes back in time and yes, fixes does. it. Yes, no, does. I'm not putting up with this crap. <laughs> no. I do not care. <laughs> right? Those are my role models. Oh, I love it. Captain Kirk and Superman. Heck yeah, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Me and William Shatter have actually uh, tweeted each other so uh, recently. He so. is a madman. Yes, we tweeted about Days for Our Lives. Actually, we tweeted about Days for Our tweeting, Lives. He was tweeting the librarians, yeah. and we were like, "Is this really the way?" That's it. And that's he was like, "He's actually watching our show." Yeah, he watched our, he he watched our show too. What it was? Yeah, I was like, it freaked me like, out. It was yeah, the first time on Twitter. I actually was like, "I got to walk away from." Oh that. no, I, my heart was beating fast, so I, like, I kind of get it. <laughs> I was like, Holy um, crap! It's kind of crazy. So okay, so there's two questions I ask every guest. Go. Um, that I don't tell them in advance. Okay. Okay. It's the same two questions, and because you're a writer. I believe in language either stopping us dead in our tracks or moving us forward. Language can do all kinds of stuff to us. Okay. So, the English language. What word should we take out of or not say anymore or use in English language? Nigger. Okay, there you go. And what word do you think we should either bring back into the English language or use more? <laughs> That's always a harder one. Uh, a lot of words out there. What should we bring back? What should we bring back? Or at least use more of. You know, you know what tickles me? Good British word. people say whilst. I like whilst too. I was like, <laughs> that's just adorable. I find that adorable. I like that's a good answer. Right, I so like I like whilst. Let's have more people saying whilst. I say that sometimes every once in a while because I have some British friends and I'll say learnt. Yeah. And whilst. It's it's adorable. I just, outside. It's, it's quaint and I like that. It makes I you think of like meadows. That's it. <laughs> And running through them. And running through them. Running through them. That's a, that's a, that's in, a good in one. In my ascot. Yes. <laughs> so lastly, um, when people when people ask you, what do you do for a living, what do you say? Uh, I write. I say I write. Uh, and then they go, what? Like, what sure. do you write? I'm like, uh, I try not to, actually, I, tr I try to steer them away from the TV stuff. Because, not that I don't say what I do, I'm right, not ashamed right. of it or all. No, right. But that can start to... Dominate a conversation in a way like what so and so really like. Right. And yeah. I think that, that's why I didn't ask you. That's, that's yeah. not why I was not important. That's not important. Also, so. the backstage of our work is work. Yes, I'm sure. Um, we get paid probably a little too much, <laughs> but we work. We work hard. Uh, we work long hours. It's not. It's a white collar job. Yeah. But it's a work. It's really. Yeah. It's not like we come in skipping every day. There are yeah. personality conflicts. There are. Sometimes interminable notes on a, yeah, on a sure. script. And sure. You the, you find out it's not a hobby the first couple of weeks you're writing because what's expected of you is fix this. Yeah. But it wasn't broken. Yes, but we fix don't it. like it the way it was. Exactly. Fix it. Yeah. And you better fix it. You know, yeah. it's a collaborative, yeah. hard, highly skilled. If you're doing it right, yeah. you don't hire your nephew. You hire the best. Yeah. Um, uh, not to say I'm the best necessarily. I'm sometimes the best and sometimes not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's life. And that's why I don't get some of the jobs I go up for. Um, it's one of the reasons. Sometimes it is my <laughs> skin color. But, <laughs> yeah, you know. You, you can't lean on that. I no. would say that. You can't lean on that crutch. No. You can't assume that's why. No. Right? I mean, sometimes it's very clear, but very rarely is someone dumb enough to make yeah. it that that's clear. Yeah, that's true. Um, so you can't come out and go, okay, it's because I'm black, right. or whatever your thing is. You yeah. have to assume it's like it just wasn't the right timing, or yeah. whatever, because the other way leads to madness and depression, and you don't move forward, yep. right? So yeah, I talk about I talk about my writing, and they say what kind. I say comics because that generally makes people smile. Okay, like what? And then now I can say Night Rider. Night Rider's a comic, and then I have to talk about all yeah. the other I get it Hollywoody stuff. Yeah, I get it because um, I always try to put, I always put Hollywood in quotes when I write about it. Because what people's picture of Hollywood is and what it actually is, 
their picture is like the old studio system. I yeah. really think most people in America and probably the world still think there's like some sort of smoking jacket back right. room where right. older gentlemen with stogies sort of <laughs> with hot but not quite very bright secretaries yes. come in who sit on their laps and they're like, well, Doris, what do you think of Jim Carrey's latest film? Right. You know, it isn't like no. that. It's a, it's a country made of a billion little kingdoms. And, Ooh, good. Right? It's, right. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a continent of a billion kingdoms. Yeah, and it has a loose affiliation with one another, loose guidelines that sort of guide everything. Yeah. But it's a mess, like you said at the top. It's chaotic, mm -hmm. and navigating it, there are no maps that I've ever seen. If Me there either. were, everyone would do it. I agree with you. Now, sir, so when we do a part two, we're going to talk. We're going. We're going. We're going to do more. We can go in on anything you want. I want to go on the comic stuff. I want to go more into your comic, um, your anime, okay. graphic novel stuff. We want to talk about that a lot. Okay. I, want, I do want to talk about that. Um, Thank you so much for being on the show. I want to say one thing. I'm going to be at WonderCon. Who tell them? I'm going to be at WonderCon this weekend um, doing a panel with uh, Brandon Easton, who just came off of AIDS and Carter. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to be doing a break in, how to break in, do oh, translate comics into into Ooh. features and TV. Ooh, that's great. I think it's at 1:30. I don't know what the hall number is uh, on Sunday. Okay. At the uh, convention center. And we have people coming here going to WonderCon this Sweet. weekend, so they'll be there too. Also, where can they find you on social media? You can find me at my my name, JeffreyThorne.com. From executives, uh, Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christie. Oh, he's like, well, but, uh, he's telling her to tell, tell me where you're okay. from. <laughs> uh, you, can find, uh, you can find me at genre19, also one word, dot, and the number 19.com, and uh, wintermanproject.com. Perfect. And that's it. Thank you. And you can find us on uh, Facebook at Breaking Into the page for us there. I'm James Hodge Jr. everywhere else. Thank you so much for watching. I'm everywhere. I'm just everywhere. Even here. Even here, I'm James Hodge Jr. It's crazy talk. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs> From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Chris, Deanna Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us, info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio, Instagram, at KingXO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host and do not necessarily